Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be talking about irradiance volume and how you can sort out your shadows, get realistic results using Eevee. So I'll explain my scene, I've just got a few cubes to break up the light, I've got this sort of box type room that I've cut out this side, I've got a UV sphere and a couple of monkeys. And lastly, I've got some lights which are casting these nice lights and colors onto our scene. But we can see lots of issues with our shadows. At the moment, I've got contact shadows on. So if I untick those, you can see it looks a lot better, but we've got this problem here with the contact. So if I turn contact shadows on, you can see it creates this problem around the room. It's helping these areas here, which I can turn up with the distance and help those areas, but it's still causing a bit of problem. I'll do the same with the other one, the contact shadows, turn those on, and I'll just turn the distance up just a touch. But we can see there's a few issues. So if I press Shift A and go to Light Probes, I can add an irradiance volume. There it is in the center. I'll go to Front View with one on my numpad, and let's just move that into position. I'm going to scale it up to around there at the moment. And what I'm looking for is this is the cutoff box here and then there's a fall off to the next box. So anything from this point will start to not be affected by the irradiance volume and then slowly fall off to being completely not affected in this area. But the main thing with this is these tiny dots. They have to be kind of inside your room, if it's a room, and they're looking for the light. So if I go back to front view and press S to scale and then Shift Z to make sure it doesn't affect my Z axis, I can bring this to cover my entire room. Let's have a look. So there's my cutoff, it's outside my room, but I must make sure that these dots are inside. So if I grab this in the z-axis and they're outside like this, these would cause problems. So I'll undo that. So at the moment there's no effect because we haven't baked our lighting. I'll talk about that in just a moment. I'll quickly go across to the object panel over here and very briefly talk about these settings. You have the fall off distance. You can see that fall off distance there. That could be useful if you want to use the irradiance volume just in certain areas to help your lighting. Then there's the fall off itself. So that brings this middle box out to the edge. And in my case, I don't need this distance here because it's all outside my room. So I can bring that right down to zero. The most important part about radiance volume is the resolution. And at the moment it's got four dots by four dots by four dots. Let's see what that actually does. So let's go to the render tab here and then press bake indirect lighting. You've got a slider down here and that's baking the lighting. Let's see how well it's done. And already it's done a lovely job and it looks pretty good. It really is as simple as that. I can probably play with my contact shadows a bit now and so forth to get an even more realistic result, but it's doing pretty well. So let's go back to that context panel and change the resolution to eight by eight. So I've selected all of them and typed in eight. And now I've got lots of dots, but make sure they're all inside your room or the area that you want to sort the lighting out for. And then let's go back to our render panel and press bake. And you can see my bake's gonna take a bit longer now. You can turn it to auto bake and that will automatically bake every time you make a change. But for the sake of this tutorial, it's easier to see when I'm baking. And there we should see an even better result. I'm going to turn off the overlays so we can see the full extent of the results. And that looks lovely. It's worth being aware that there's options as well inside your bake that will increase the resolution and so forth. But that's probably for a more advanced tutorial. So that's irradiance volume. Really useful for things like architectural modeling where lighting plays such an important part. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.